thanksgiving. Give it back to the Lord. God, I love you and I honor you. You are mighty. You are wonderful. Yes, King. You are our comforter, our friend, our battle axe, our tower, our refuge. There's so much that we can thank God for and so much to say to him. So he knows that you are appreciative of what he has done. Why don't you stretch your hands up and say, God, forgive me for the things that I put before you. Forgive me for the things that I've done before you. Forgive me for the times that I did not come to you first. Forgive me, God, for the times when I ignored your voice. Forgive me, God, for following my own desires. I know God for not listening and not following what you say. God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, oh God. A wretch like me. Oh God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. And today I'm saying thank you for another chance. Thank you for another chance. You've given me another week so that I can dedicate it to you. I can try again. I can love again. I can hear again. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let your guard down in his presence. Let that heavy heart go in his presence and just say, God, I honor you and I thank you. You showed up in my life so many times, so many times. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. God, you wrapped your arms around me and you kept me. God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, sweet Rose of Sharon. Thank for the great God that he is. I 
Father. He's a wonderful Savior. Talk to me. Yes, he is. He's a wonderful keeper. I don't know, no love like the love of the Lord. Has he been loving on you? <laughs> Has he been taking care of you? When I stop and think about it, I say, God, you've been good. God, you've been wonderful. He's been mighty, 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 mighty. That heart of gratitude is what we worship with, knowing that no one can do us like him. Talk to me, y'all. Even when it's dark, even in times of trouble, there's no one like him.
that nothing is too hard for the Lord. It's not too hard. It's not too... But then we doubt Him. And then we take time to do things on our own. But the song came as a reminder. It says, There is nothing, nothing you cannot do. Nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot turn around. You are able, great and mighty God. I put my trust in you. You are able, Jesus. I want us to sing that part one more time with hands lifted and eyes closed and us tapping into his presence and just use these words to say God I'll trust you again and I won't worry about it I'll just leave it in your hands let your will be done God let your kingdom come God because I know there's nothing you cannot do I believe it I know it's true I know it's true I know it's true. I know it's true. Sometimes you gotta talk to yourself, say, I know it's true. No matter what people say, no matter what's happening in my life, I know it's true. Yes. Let's see, there is nothing, there is nothing, nothing you cannot do. Come on, Davidic, see, nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot turn around. You are able, great and mighty God. I put my trust. I put my trust in you. You are able, Jesus. See, there is nothing. There is nothing. Trust him to do.
do it again. Trust him to do it again. Broken hearts. He has mended hearts before. He has calmed the troubled minds before. He has opened shut doors before. Somebody in here should be shouting, yes he has. Somebody in here should be shouting, amen. Somebody in here should be saying, yes he did it for me. He did it for my family. He did it, he did it, he did it. He did it before. before the king. Healer and defender. Healer and defender. Prince of peace. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Elohim. The Most High God, El Shaddai, the Risen Savior, Strong Tower, my safe place. When the music fades and all is stripped away, I just simply come. Longing just to breathe something that's a word that will bless your heart. Ooh. I'll bring you more than a song for a song is, is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things occur. You're looking into my heart. Lift your hands up, church. When the music fades and all is stripped away, sing. I just simply. Just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Can you raise it up? Sing, I'll bring you more.
of endless, King of endless. Tell him no one can express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath.
together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God To God, to be the glory, to God, be the glory, hey, to be the glory, oh,
glory. To God be the 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 glory. Somebody shout yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody shout glory! Somebody shout glory! Let yourself go, let your praise go! Somebody shout glory! Somebody point your hand to the heaven and say, To God be the glory for the things he has done. 2022, he brought us through. Somebody shout to God. Somebody shout to God. To God! To God! Somebody shout to God! Be the glory! Tell somebody next to you, he's brought us through 2022. Tell somebody he's brought us through Tell those three people he's brought us through. Those of you in your house, if nobody is home, speak to the wall. Speak to your clothes. Speak to your fridge. Speak to your cupboard. Say to God. Be the glory. He's brought us through. 2022. Somebody give him praise up in this room and in your house. Hey! 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 Hallelujah! In spite of everything we went through, he brought us through. In spite of everything we faced, he brought us out. I'm not waiting until New Year's Eve. I'm going to praise him now. Because I don't know if I'll be alive to praise him then. I praise him now. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Glory, 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 glory. God be the glory what the enemy meant for evil God turn it around for good what the enemy meant for evil God somebody declare God is turning God is turning God is turning something around for me Ah, God is turning my situation around. God is turning my circumstances around. God is turning my situation around. God is turning my circumstances around. He turned it around for me. He's turning it around for me. Around for me. Around for me. He's turning it around for me. This again, he's turning around. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me. He's turning it. around One more time, around for me. Yes, he is. Yes, he is around. He's turning us. One more time around. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me. 
I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. Change is coming for me. Hey. If I stand strong and believe, there's no reason, reason it down. God, God is working it out. He's turning around for me. Around and around for me. God is turning somebody's situation around right now. Around for me. It's turning around. Singing around for me. Around for me. Come on. Around. Around for me. Around for me. He's turning around so I can see. God is making a way. His reason is down. Oh, if I stand strong and believe, there's no reason to doubt. God is working it out. He's turning around for me. Around for me around for me around for me he's turning around for me put your hands together for the video let's turn it around let's turn it around you see, I don't know if I'm going to be here New Year's Eve, so I'm going to tell him now. Just turning it around. For me, aye, aye, aye. Turn it around. Every circumstance. Every situation. Just turn it around. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. 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 We don't wrestle in vain. We wrestle knowing that the war is already fixed. We shall win because Jesus has already won. Hallelujah. Tell somebody it's fixed. Tell somebody it's a fixed fight. I can't, I'm coming in. Tell somebody I'm coming in with a distinct advantage. Tell somebody I'm coming in to this fight with a distinct advantage so I don't expect to lose in fact I know I can't lose because God is in my corner he's on my side he's my coach he's my friend that's sticking closer than a brother I got the best in my corner and he's fighting for me he's fighting for me and that's why my circumstance is going to turn around for better. Hallelujah. 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 Turn it around. Hallelujah. Turn it around. 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 You're not going to leave this year feeling sorry for yourself. He's turning it around. Even while the fire is still blazing, he's turning it around. He's turning it around. The beautiful thing is he's not outside of the fire with us. He's in the fire with us. He's in the heat with us. He's inside the circumstance with us. 
because he promised us he will never leave us he didn't say I'm gonna be with you when times are hard or when times are good he says I'll always be with you even until the end of the age hallelujah so until Christ he's with us always there's somebody always there's some point your hand somebody face and tell them always somebody always hallelujah you may be seated God is good <clears throat> go with me your Bibles to the 23rd Psalm we are uh, Psalm 23 we are continuing We are continuing on, we're continuing this series. I think I'm going to just close out the year with this. Because I think, uh, by the way, we, are we getting anything from the series that I'm doing? Amen. You sure? Amen. You're taking notes? Yeah. You take your own notes. Even if I don't give you specific notes, take your own notes. Interpret, write, and then examine. Amen. So last week we got to the point where we talked about on this journey, we need protection. And so we entitled, we entitled the segment we did last Sunday, Protect Me on This Journey. <clears throat> Protect Me on This Journey. Thank you. Protect Me on This Journey. I thought last week was pretty special. It was a, a wonderful rendition of the text. But this week, we want to go to the 23rd Psalm, a very familiar 23rd Psalm. And basically, what we'll be doing this week is interpreting the Psalm in a way that it can be interpreted uh, to using a hermeneutical approach uh, to discuss the whole idea of how God really wants to protect us on this journey as we walk uh, in his way. God wants to protect us. <clears throat> if we remember, this is not even in my notes, but if you remember when the children of Israel were leaving captivity, they were leaving uh, Egypt, and on their way, uh, I said that as though it was a light thing. It was not a light thing. They, God had to make a way for them out of bondage. And it took them a while, but God made a way for them out of bondage. <clears throat> and God showed himself to the children of Israel by protecting them day and night. Anybody remember by day how he protected them? By a cloud. He protected them by a cloud. The day was cooler. The day was safer for them because he protected them by a cloud by day. And then how did he protect them by night? By fire. Wow, those are two means of protection. But then there was a third means of protection that he used when uh, Pharaoh's armies were coming up uh, on their backside I have to say that decently before it is misconstrued. They're coming up from behind them. And what did God do? Anybody? No, they, 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 there was a wall, uh, 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 a cloud kind of. Some writers suggest that it was God used the sand of the desert to create a separation between the back of his people. Pay attention to this. Between the back of his people and the front of their enemies. So your enemies, if we were to hazard an interpretation for our benefit, the, the, the enemies were behind them and they could not see behind them. But they knew that the enemy was on their heels. Have you ever felt in your life like there is an enemy that is coming to get you? You can't see the enemy, but you know they're there. 
Right. It's like you're sensing that there is an enemy, but you can't even identify who or what the enemy is. Sometimes you could say what you think it is or what you sense it is, but you can't describe what it is because it's invisible. Are you with me? Amen. The most dangerous enemy is, is neither the visible nor the invisible. Both forms of enemy lines are dangerous. When you can see and quantify and identify who or what the enemy is, it is dangerous. But you have a chance to strike a physical thing. But, 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 but if you have an invisible enemy, the invisible enemy can almost seem invincible. That it cannot be defeated. And so we have to be careful how we, as we are on this journey, because remember, we are talking here about God protecting us on this journey. And sometimes, I, I was thinking uh, sometime yesterday, that sometimes when we talk about an enemy or we talk about a fight, sometimes we think about aggression. Like, like in the fight, we have to attack. But sometimes in warfare, you have to sit back. And, it, and the, when you sit back is when the enemy is self-destructive. Are you with me, church? Church. It's when the enemy, come on, you got to preach with me. It's when the enemy is self-destructive. Then you don't have to do anything. And then I thought about this. Many times we blame the enemy, meaning Satan, for doing all kinds of things to us. When the enemy is actually sitting back and watching us self-destruct. The enemy doesn't have to do certain things to you if you're doing it yourself. But, 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 but you know, sometimes we love a scapegoat. <laughs> we love to blame someone else for the actions we take that cause us to be in the positions we are in. Many of you today are making secret decisions to harm yourself and you think it's good. You can't blame the devil for that. You have a sin nature that allows for that kind of decision making. But you have to make a choice to overcome the sin nature by having an increased spiritual relationship with God. So we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So if you don't have an inner life, your outer testimony is just a reflection of what happens inside. Is not true? You say you should say it louder. All right? Many times we defeat ourselves and blame the devil. And the poor devil is there saying, I've been trying to divide a country, not you. Why are you blaming me? You made the choice. The last time I checked, God gave all of us freedom of choice. He even told us, that we should choose this day whom we will serve. Right. God is not forcing anything on anyone. They serve me or else. You better come unto me. All you who are labor and heavy laden. And I will give you rest if I please. No, he's already pleased. <laughs> That's why he, he, God suffered his own son to uh, give his life on Calvary. For the redemption of mankind. Even though God in his foreknowledge knew then and still knows now. That not all men will say yes to him. But if he is God. Then he will make the sacrifice. That is a, it's wherein its benefits are available to all. Or he wouldn't be God. God doesn't make provision for some people. He makes provision for all people. Are you with me, church? He makes provision for what? All people. Not some people, but all people. Tell somebody he's made provision for you. So, so now, so now, God, we saw how God protected his people at least three ways. He caused a separation between uh, the Egyptians and his people escaping into their freedom. After an entire generation had been languishing in captivity in Egypt. God is now setting 
uh, <clears throat> a separation as a form of defense. So what was happening, the children of Israel knew and could have seen the Egyptians coming behind them, but the Egyptians could not see them ahead of them. Amen. Watch this, a fourth, a fourth way he protected them is that God opened up the sea and caused them to cross over into their destiny on dry ground. Now you can't tell me that's not a miracle. I mean, if you're listening to us anywhere in the world, you may not even believe. You may say, that's just a figment or that's just a metaphor. I'm not taking your argument. I think it was literal. And God caused them to cross over. You can't cross over and walk on a seabed that is not slippery. That is impossible. I've never been to the bottom of a sea, but everything I check, National Geographic is going to tell you. Right? You can't. And so... I keep interpreting stuff to help myself. That if God is going to help me escape, I cannot guarantee that I could hold off my enemy. But if God has already anointed my head with oil and my cup is overflowing, it means that he has destiny still for me. Because God is not going to bless you if he's going to kill you. If you're going to leave, God, there's no need for you to be blessed. You're already blessed to go home to be with him. Final blessing, to go home to be with him. But, but if my enemy is on my heel and God opens up a way for me to escape, it means I'm still in his blessing. Because he's making a way out. And then the place that he takes me through to get out of my situation usually is a slippery place. But for me, he made it dry. In the place that is built for me to slip and fall, he made it dry so I can escape. I'm taking lessons. I'm taking lessons. I know that God is in it. I know that God is in it not when I win it, but when I am on the way, the path he makes for me tells me, if I understand anything about that path, it tells me that God has made this way. A place that should be slippery, he makes dry. A place that is crooked, he takes me through unscathed, unharmed, untouched. I know it's God because that's a place where the enemy can defeat me. But the only reason I am not defeated is because God is taking me through. Are you with me, church? Watch this, watch this. So now he, he opens up the way. I call this a two-in-one. He opens up the way and he makes the ground dry. They're walking through walls of water. Their, their, their path is the walls are water. The place that the water settles is now dry while water is still here. You know, when you travel the coast of Guyana, you're going to the northwestern part of Guyana, there's a beautiful thing. If you're flying, you may not see it. But if you're, if you're in a boat, you can see it. On the coastline, the Atlantic Ocean meets the Essequibo River. This is blue water. And this is muddy water. And there is no mixing. Listen something. Listen something. I don't know if there's any other country in the world that experiences that. Maybe there is. But that was, I, I looked for that moment every time we traveled to the northwest I, uh, of Guyana, northwestern part of Guyana. I got a region one. Uh, that's where Husororo and uh, Machu's Ridge and Port Kaituma and those parts are beautiful. That's more that those places are more beautiful than Georgetown by far. You just you go there, you feel fresh. There, nothing is polluted. Nothing. It's beautiful, beautiful. Anyways, but when you're traveling the coast, I, 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 I came out to the boat side of the boat just to observe the majesty of God's creation. No man can put that in place. No scientist can put that in place. Scientists might be able to explain why it's not mixing. But, but God, God is the one that designed that. 
That's the kind of God that created you in his image and in his likeness. And that's the same God that protects you. A God that, it looks simple, but try it. You try getting some muddy water and get some clear water and throw it together and see what's going to happen. That should tell you that you're not God. (laughs) We are his creation. That's the kind of God, a God that is able to cause different bodies of water to meet, but not mix. If I use my preaching mind, I will say to you, why do you mix with everyone you meet when God has only arranged a meeting, not a mixing? That's right, that's right. That's my, that's my preaching mind. Some, some people you don't need to mix with, you just need to meet them. Because God just is just God is just ordering a transfer. God is not ordering a union. Sometimes we want to mix with everybody. On this journey, you got to be careful who you mix with. Have you ever tried uh, cooking or uh, cook up rice with just water? You got to use milk. Coconut milk. Even though one time we used carnation. <laughs> Poor people <laughs> invent. <laughs> Listen to me. My mother was a genius here. Yeah? Uh, you, you know what? I, man, look, listen, listen, sister. Your daughter says she, she, she know nothing about that. Y'all grow up with silver spoon in your mouth here. Carnation cook up. Try it. Try it. Or I saw my mother. My mother was the queen of stretch. She mixed, she had half a coconut. That's when the enough coconut didn't drop at the back. Half a coconut, tell you all my business this Christmas. Half a coconut and one tin of carnation milk. So here is some yes or amens now. <laughs> and brethren, we didn't die. We still here healthy and strong. These American kids don't know nothing but sacrifice. They get everything. I don't want bologna and I don't want this and I don't eat that. When I was growing up, you didn't have a choice. The eggs were laid in our, right in our pens, but we only got half. When we got a whole egg, it was my birthday, Christmas, Easter. <laughs> now, I, now I only use organic eggs and I boil four. <laughs> don't tell me, don't, what? Four. Yes, three is a portion. <laughs> Four is a portions. <laughs> Along this journey, brethren, we need protection. You know, it, it, it's just, it's more than a covering. Sometimes the protection is a provision. That if we are not provided for, we could be exposed to abuse. Hmm. If we're not provided for, that's why I never played around with, with provision for my family. Was I the best at it? No, and I'm still learning. I'm the greatest guy who has ever provided. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is my heart was always in the right place. To provide, because if you don't provide as a man for your family, you're exposing your family to abuse. Is that sound? Because if if, if you don't provide for your family, then anyone that provides instead of you is likely to make requests that they should not make, but make it nonetheless because they are given power to provide. You know, I, I don't give up on certain things. I, I watched my mom. It must be said like he had a father, but that's not the point. I watched my mom and the sisters at church. When you hear the point, then you will know why I couldn't say daddy. I watched Sister Bizet. These women are now deceased. I'm honoring them in their death. 
Sister Bezet, who was a pianist. My mother played too, but to a lesser extent. Um, Sister Jilks, who lives in New Jersey now, I remember must be in their 90s. Um, uh, Sister Chow has gone on to be with the Lord. And a, a number of other women of faith. I watched these women exchange blouses. You know, Steve Harvey said you must have a, a fawn suit, a black suit, a blue suit, and a gray suit. Two white shirts. And, and I can't remember what ties. And he says out of those you can make, I think it's 12, 12 or 15 different looks. Right? I'm not very good with that. I always had to ask, how this look? How the look? I'm color challenged. <laughs> right? But these women did that and more back in the day. I would say, my woman wore a blouse this week, but next week I ain't see the blouse. Then Sister Bizet shows up in church with a blouse looking like it. Because I was not permitted to say, that's my mother blouse. As a matter of fact, you don't even know. You're not sure. Right? But you couldn't say nothing. Now, now we, we decry those old. Now, young people, listen up. We decry them old folks. Say they're old and they know, oh, that was back then. And blah, 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 blah. But they were, there was true Christian virtue right. exercised right. in that kind of behavior. They wa I used to see my mother washing, scrooching. That's how I learned. If you ever heard me wash with my hand, it's got scrooch, scrooch, scrooch. I'm a professional. They might. If I'm washing and you're not seeing, you think it's a lady washing. Right? Because my hand scrooch, scrooch, scrooch. And I don't go one and two times. It was every, every move. I'm good at this thing. Every, I learned that from the age seven, six, seven, I was washing. Scrooch, scrooch. One lady was working with us back in Guyana, and I got up in the morning and I forgot to wash my white shirts and I had a funeral. So I got up early and she came in and heard, and she says, Hello, hello, Pastor, Pastor. I said, Hi, how are you? Good morning. She says, Is you hang going, sir? I said, yes, what happened? She said, I never hear no man go like that. I said, so what do you mean? You're saying that I'm a girl? Like you? He said, no, Pastor, I'm not saying that. I said, oh, because uh, you know, we make, make light of the matter. But, but the point I'm trying to make, those people exchange blouses and skirts just to look different the next week because they didn't have much. And you never heard a word about it. I grew up little boy, never heard. If I call uh, Sister Jill's son, Mark, all in New Jersey, we remember those things. Never heard a word. You know why? Because there was something that was understood. That confidentiality protects relationships. Now I brought you a story there from the age of seven. Confidentiality protects relationships. I learned very well. My mother took us to the scriptures and says, never let this hand know what this hand is doing. Both hands on your body, but don't let the other one know. <laughs> Be confidential because it protects. Sometimes we ask God for things that we are not prepared to give. Lord, protect me. God says, but I put you in relationship with this person and you are not even, you don't even have enough integrity to protect that person's information. But you're asking me for protection when you had the opportunity to protect that person's information. Mm, food for thought. So now they're over on the other side. I get into the text yet. They're over on the other side. Deacon, they're over on the other side. They're safe. But their enemies are still pursuing them. 
You think because the enemy not seeing you, the enemy is going to leave you alone? No, no, no. The enemy is looking for any and every opening to get you. So they pursue them. And then they arrive at the bank of the river and they notice there is an opening. An invitation to their demise. But they're undiscerning. Because all their focus is is to get the Israelites and destroy them. And the same place, the same place that preserved the lives of God's people is the same place that became their graveyard. I want to guarantee, and listen, I'm, I'm issuing a guarantee today that all the giants, if you saw my post yesterday or the day before yesterday, all the giants that was assigned to defeat you, you will see them no more. You don't even need to pray in towns and shout and holler and kick up. Do the, you, you don't just, just, just need to trust. Just trust God. Because the giants that are coming against you today, watch it. Tomorrow, you won't see them. They will still exist, but it won't come into your sphere. That's right, that's right. They will still be working, but not against you. Because you learn to resist the enemy. And when you resist the enemy, the enemy doesn't have enough stamina to stay. When you resist, the enemy has to flee. But you cannot resist in anger and resist in fear because those are open doors. Am I teaching y'all today or what? These last couple of weeks I've been sharpening up. I've been getting good. Gooder and gooder and gooder. When you resist the enemy, the enemy flees. Listen, if you want a great example, I know some of you are not sports enthusiasts, right? But look at the World Cup, especially these last games. When you see the masters of the game play, it's, a, it, it's, it's, like, it, it's like chess. It's like chess. Everybody's drawing people in, creating angles. Now that I tell you, when you look at the game, you're going to see what I'm showing you. Creating a bap, 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 bap. Everybody's a bap, 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 bap. It's skill because everybody is the best. But even the best will lose. A, key, a team ranked eight in the world never won the World Cup. Gets beaten by another team. Everybody says, oh my goodness. And then a team that doesn't look like they're worth anything. A bunch of fine guys running around like this from Morocco. Is beating everybody. You know why? They're the unknown quantity. The only reason the enemy knows where to locate you is because you tell him where to locate you. You tell the enemy where to locate you by your own actions. I want you to see this. You hang with the wrong crowd, so you do the wrong things because in order to fit in with the crowd, you got to do what they do. Or else you become a deviant even in a place that is wrong. The place is not good. So the people that hang there love the bad things that happen there, but you hang with them. In order to fit in, you got to do what they do. And once you begin doing what they do, you become just like them. Instead of leading them out, they have sucked you in. You learn strategy. You learn how to draw the enemy out. If you're going to defeat yourself, I don't have to plan to defeat you. That's a waste of resources. That's why the Russians were beaten. I'm using these examples to help you see something. That's why the Russians were beaten. And they're still being beat every day. You can get cheap drones and bomb little children and kill little babies. You're a coward. That man is not a leader. That man is a coward. He's a murderer. You're killing little babies. You know, you're just bombing. You, you, no strategy anymore. You're just bombing. You don't care who die. That's when you're desperate. Desperate people do desperate things. But those Ukrainians are strategic. And perhaps the only reason you haven't achieved the thing that God has already promised you is because you are not being strategic. Right. You think the promise is enough, strategy by God. A promise is not a strategy. It's something that God wants to deliver to us. Yeah. But we must position ourselves. That's right. 
to receive it. Are you with me, church? Don't go into next year thinking that God's got to give you what you ask for. Everything is conditional. Hello. You got to put your hands to the plow and don't take it back. You got to work. Allow God to guide you. Allow God to direct you. You know, I heard someone say, but he asked God for wisdom and God gave him problems to solve. I feel the anointing go up in my one hand there. He says, he, says, he says, I asked God for wisdom and God gave me problem to solve. Hmm. I thought about that. I got to be careful what I ask for. <laughs> because sometimes we think like, you know, as a, as a young Christian, you used to think like, like wisdom used to, I won't imagine just literally dropping from the sky, but it's like God will just infuse you with wisdom. Like, whoosh. Got to get some experience. Oh, my God. You ask God for strength, he's going to give you a trial. Mm -mm -mm. Lord, I want to be like T.D. Jakes. You sure? <laughs> Lord, I want to be like Benny Hinn. You sure? Sure you can handle when I was a younger Christian, I used to pray them things. Or give me anointing like Benny Hinn. Until I start experiencing some things to get it. And I said, no, 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 no. Lord, give me what you have for me. <laughs> then you get to realize the thing don't equate. Like, I am not him. My purpose and his purpose are two different things. You know, we both preach, but our purposes are different. Uh, and people say, oh, I would, I, would, I would tell the president this and if I see him. You sure? Do you understand the kind of power those guys wield? Do you understand the kind of protections they have naturally? And you will just speak. If God don't anoint you to speak, then you shouldn't. Because you get yourself in trouble. Are you with me? All right. We got two minutes. The 23rd Psalm reminds us that in life or in death, in times of plenty and in times of lack, God is still good to us. It's not just when we have, but it's more when we don't have. Trist Worship, our truest worship is not realized when we have a lot. It's when we don't have anything. When we don't have anything to thank God for. And that is not possible, but I'm just stating it this way. When everything is going against us, that's when our truest worship, if we really, if we really love God, that's when our truest worship is realized. When we don't have the things we ask for. Now, what I just said to you there is easier said than done. I, I, I'm done with telling people, oh, God is going to do it. And God is going to, then when, when the person goes home, God is going to do it. It's empty because the thing is still there. But, but sometimes God is going to do it through our own actions. Some things God just wants us to change. And our life will change. And then some people want God to do great things for them. And then when he does it, they don't even know that he did it. They praise men. <laughs> he said, oh, he said, Lord, thank you. I see all them football players when they score a goal. They're like, I don't know what I mean. If it's Allah, Buddha, or Jesus. I don't know. So I, I don't get moved by that. I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> when I hear what you say. When you say. Praise Jesus. In Spanish. For what he has done. I know you're talking about Jesus. But when you mix up. I don't know. Because a lot of those guys playing are Muslims. And Jesus to a Muslim. Is legitimately just another prophet. He is not considered to be God. Supreme one. He's just another prophet. 
like Muhammad equate him. There is no equivalency between Jesus and Muhammad. Muhammad is still in a grave somewhere in Mecca. Jesus made his way out of the grave. Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes, his enemy. He arose a victor, not a victim, from the dark domain of hell. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. That's us. To reign. But he arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Are you with me? The psalmist uses the metaphor of a shepherd's care for his sheep to describe the wisdom and the majesty and the strength and the awesome splendor and the kindness and the mercy of our God. This is what he's conveying to us. Let us be careful with a couple of things. Let us be careful with the phrase, I shall not want. But do not want him to do. When he says, I shall not want, he's not saying, I don't want him or I don't want him to. He is saying, I shall suffer no lack. I shall suffer no lack. Listen to something. I make the mistake too sometimes. You know, sometimes you're angry, sometimes you're, f you're frustrated, and, 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 and you make statements that you regret a second later because you know that that is counterproductive. It's, it's, it's not what God's word tells us. But, but thank God for the ability to repent. The ability to repent, right? Because we, we can repent, but we should be careful because... He is not saying the Lord is my shepherd, but I don't want him to or wish for him to do something in my life. Instead, he means that with God, with God, that God is with us and that he is our protector, that he would suffer lack in nothing, that he would never be in want. Because God shall supply all of his needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Brethren, the supply that decimates lack is not just food. Because I can also show you how the provision of food is also a protection. It's a protection from poor health. God taught the whole thing out when he, he, when he created us. The food is for physical nourishment. For, for, for us to receive and maintain good health. So that when we get uh, uh, economic wealth, our physical health would match the economic wealth. So that we won't have to spend all of it at doctors. That's an imbalance. If you just get rich and everything goes back to the medical profession. But God wants us to experience his protection through his provision of good food, of good jobs. It's a protection. Man, I've never applied this this way before. Never. I preached this a thousand times. Never applied this way before. It's a protection along the way. God protected some people when he, he barbecued fish by the Sea of Galilee. You're pushing it, you know, like, you're pushing it, you know. <laughs> yes, I'm pushing it. I'm pushing the buttons. I'm pushing to the edges. It is a protection because if they were hungry, they could not follow him. If I keep you here until 4 o'clock and don't give you anything to eat, you'll vex with me. You only sit because you don't want to insult me and get up and leave. But if I feed you, if while you're sitting, people bring drinks to you, some chicken the rough, <laughs> some Burger King, or my favorite from Popeye's, 
the spicy chicken breast sandwich. If you bring that, I will preach all afternoon. Like, I won't even take a break. I'll be taking it like communion, resting it there, getting you angry that you can't get a piece. Right? It is a protection. When I was growing up, my mother and father, you, look, we, we don't have much, but we have pride. That's the talk we used to get. We don't have much, but we have pride. You don't go there asking Miss So 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 for anything. We need the breadfruit. The breadfruit just fell. You hoard it, pop, it fell. My father makes so. Because we're going for the breadfruit. <laughs> it's dinner, bro. Like, what? Pop, we're like, it's like, it's like you're, you're programmed to, 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 to the sound of a fallen breadfruit. Pop, it's like, it's like, who's out the gate first gets the breadfruit? So if I don't want to get no breadfruit now in my metem, don't be angry with me. My system is built on breadfruit. <laughs> to what? It's not that I hate breadfruit. I've had so much of it, my nose looks like breadfruit. Anybody? <laughs> Brethren, I ate stuffed breadfruit for Christmas. Oh, Lord. Like, 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 my mother was a specialist. That's what virtuous women do. I'm sure if I were to ask you for your stories, you got all kinds of stories that are similar, right? She, she, she scoped the inside, boiled it a little, can't do it full, like half boiled. And she takes it out, it's steaming. And she cuts up the chicken gizzard and, and so on. Yeah, fry that up, make a stew. Right? With the, with the liver. Uh, There's this cow and chicken stuff mixed up in there. The cow liver, chop up, fried, seasoned nice. And then she stuffs it. And then she gets a string. And she puts it back together. And then bakes it in a little oven like this. Are we excited? We excited. Now when you put string beans on the table, these children are making up their face. They have to get special songs for them to sing it. String beans and peas and rice and speed. And all kind of songs. We were glad for the thing to finish. Like you have no choice. Like what? Song? The song is the sound of the spoon or the fork hitting the plate after you would have cut through the breadfruit. Wonderful days. Wonderful days. Those are wonderful days. Those are wonderful days. I'm telling you, I have no regret. Wonderful days. Now, when you go into places in America, breadfruit is a delicacy. Now I see some half-dead breadfruit on Church Avenue. <laughs> I got to say the breadfruit looked like a half dead. The breadfruit like it was picked six months before its time. It is anemic. The, the breadfruit's fine like this. I never saw no breadfruit. That's when the breadfruit is young. But when the thing is full, it gets... And then the milk starts running on the outside and it gets brown. By itself. When you cut the breadfruit, it's almost yellow. Me and this breadfruit thing on there. So be careful with the phrase, I shall not want. It means I shall suffer no lack. I want God in my life. I want God to do the thing that he promised in his word. I shall suffer no lack. All my needs shall be met. Your needs are greater than your wants. Always greater than your wants. What do I need from God today in my life? Lord, protect me on this journey. You know, throughout the pandemic, I was never afraid. I don't know why. I was never afraid. Well, I should know why. Uh, never afraid. I know why. Uh, after I finish. <laughs> Lord, protect me. 
this. I finish baking. I get darker. Y'all could barely see me. I said, no. I thought you loved me, brother. Now you put this on, I'm about to say amen. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> to feed, to guide, to shield me. I shall suffer no lack in my life. Stand with me where you are. No lack. Tell the person next to you, you shall suffer no lack. Tell them again, you shall suffer no lack. Hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. Tell the person, you shall suffer no lack. Say, God shall protect you in every area of your life on this journey. Just, just enforce this. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up. Say, neighbor, yeah. you may not have all that you require for life and living, but you're breathing. I want you to do it just the way I just said, but you're breathing. Come on, because but, but you're breathing. So you have a chance. Say, but you're a worshiper. A true worshiper at that. So you still have a chance. <laughs> Tell him you still have a chance. Still have a chance. God has given to us two things. Chance. And opportunity. Or time. And opportunity. Our word time means chance. Two things. Those are two guarantees. But that time comes to an end at some point. But while we have it, we still have hope. Lift your hands, everybody. Father. Oh, yes. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises as your people declare your mighty word blessed be the Lord God almighty who was and is who was and is and is to come, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns, who reigns forever. One more time, blessed be, blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come, blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, who reigns forevermore, who reigns forever, who reigns forever.
and the ushers will furnish you with an envelope. Hallelujah. As we are preparing to give, I will go over briefly the announcements. And we know that this is the end of year and we bless God for bringing us to the end of 2022. Amen. So please mark these dates in your calendar. Our New Year's Eve service, um, for us from the Caribbean is our Old Year's Night service. Um, it is December 31st at 9.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. December 31st at 9.30 in the sanctuary, 9.30 p.m. Amen. Um, fasting and prayer. Our season of fasting and prayer begins January 8th and it concludes on the 15th. January 8th and it concludes on the 15th. Please keep in mind that you don't just start fasting abruptly. There is a breakdown period of your meals. Amen. If you are in need of the fasting manual, we will have those manuals available. If you have one currently, it is available. It is available in the back, the fasting manual at the information desk. If you have your manual from years um, past, you can use it. Amen. Please follow the instructions of your doctor if you have any health conditions. Amen. So our fasting begins January 8th and concludes January 15th. Um, also, our anniversary service is February 26th at 3 p.m. We are going back to our afternoon celebration, February 26th at 3 p.m. Please begin coming with your gifts, your offerings, and your tithes unto the Lord. You can start coming up the middle aisle, and we exit on the sides um, of the sanctuary. Amen. Good. December 18th is our social. Yeah. Next Sunday morning, December 18th is our Christmas social, our Christmas party, our celebration. We will have service and break down into the celebration and dancing and everything like that. Amen? So come dress comfortable, look cute, look christmas E. okay? christmas E. And <laughs> let's have fun together, okay? Bring a friend, bring your family, bring everyone out. Um, of course, meals will be served and we'll have a good time celebrating what God has done for us in this season of celebration. Um, and so thank you so much for joining us this morning in service. Join me in standing all over the sanctuary as we are going to be dismissed. Amen. We see some familiar faces in our congregation. Welcome back, Aaliyah. It's good seeing you. She's visiting. Um, is there anyone here for the first time at Transformation Center, New York? We know each other. Amen. So greet each other after the service 
and say hello. We went over birthdays already for the month of December. If your birthday is coming up this week, happy birthday. <laughs> Pastor Wong celebrated her birthday. Deacon Bob celebrated his birthday. Renee is celebrating her birthday on the 15th. Sister Reese is celebrating her birthday. All right, so we should sing the birthday song. I think we have more people today celebrating their birthday. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. The best that you ever day, right? All right, let's lift our hands. Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you, God, for family, friends, and fellowship. Thank you, God, that we've come together as transformers to worship you in this way and to, and to mingle with each other and fellowship with each other for this season of gratitude and thanksgiving. God, we thank you for a wonderful year, though the test and trials, you've brought us to the end. You've brought us, God, to the last month of 2022, and we give it all back to you, glory and honor and praise. Thank you, God, for the tithes and the offering. Use it, oh God, for the expansion of this house and for your kingdom. Thank you for our apostle and prophetess. Thank you for using them, God, using apostle today to bring this timely word to us. Help us all to take it during this week and share of your goodness with everyone we come into contact with. Keep us all safe. Continue to protect us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Y'all have a blessed week. Choir on this side of the sanctuary.